right friends welcome back to learning space we are going to present union budget 2017-18 in three parts and please have patience to listen to all the three parts i would like to explain a lot about what is capital receipts revenue receipts through this budget and about various schemes also you will have clear idea once you patiently hear these three parts and let us start three specialities about this year's budget one is merger of plan and non plan expenditure and please don't forget 12th five year plan will be the last because the planning commission has gone away so 12th five year plan will be completed by march 31 2017 and subsequently there will not be any five year plans so if someone asks 12th five year plan is the last five year plan and now niti aayog is looking at the perspective plans that is all different story then second point is this year's budget is advanced by a month from february 28th to february 1st basically to eliminate utan account the main purpose of presenting budget one month in advance is to eliminate utan account utan account means this gives authority to withdraw money from consolidated fund of india so utan account will be eliminated from this year and all the budget proceedings will be completed by march 31 2017 third important point is general budget and railway budget were merged for the first time since 1924 so these are three things please don't forget and when you look at constitutional provisions as far as budget is concerned the name of budget was not mentioned in the constitution but constitution talks about annual financial statement as per article 112 then finance bill finance bill is basically raising the taxes or you can say with regard to various taxes so the provisions with regard to various taxes are incorporated in finance bill and this is as per article 110 of the constitution and demands for grants demands for grants means each and every department how much expenditure is required during the financial year that expenditure part how much expenditure is required that is given in demands for grants this is as per article 113 of the constitution once for demands for grants passed by the parliament subsequent step is appropriation bill appropriation bill means to withdraw money from the consolidated fund of india so this appropriation bill is to be passed this is as per article 114 of the constitution so if you look at various constitutional provisions article 112 talks about annual financial statement article 110 talks about finance bill that means various taxes are incorporated in finance bill and various expenditure part is incorporated in demands for grants and subsequently based on the passage of demand for grants how much money is required to be withdrawn from consolidated fund of india that is incorporated as per article 114 of the constitution and that is known as appropriation bill so having learned this please don't forget budget also contains certain other statements they are fiscal policy strategy statement medium term fiscal policy statement like that three four statements are given in the union budget and these are as per fiscal responsibility and budget management act of 2003 but not as per constitution and at the same time department of expenditure in the ministry of finance in collaboration with niti aayog is preparing the consolidated outcome budget consolidated outcome budget is being prepared by niti aayog as well as department of expenditure so this is all about the constitutional provisions as well as various statements given in the budget and if you look at important terminology fiscal deficit 
fiscal deficit is difference between total expenditure and revenue receipts plus non debt capital receipts or otherwise you can say it indicates borrowings and other liabilities by the government borrowings and other liabilities are known as debt capital receipts i will explain you a little while from now so debt capital receipts is nothing but fiscal deficit or you can say it is the difference between total expenditure and revenue receipts plus non debt capital receipts because capital receipts are bifurcated into non debt capital receipts debt capital receipts debt capital receipts are nothing but borrowings and other liabilities by the government then revenue deficit another term is revenue deficit revenue deficit means it is the excess of revenue expenditure over the revenue receipts and what is revenue what is the capital i will explain a little while from now and revenue deficit is it is the excess of revenue expenditure over revenue receipts so when revenue expenditure is more than revenue receipts it indicates that some of the capital receipts are going for revenue expenditure normally capital receipts should be utilized for creation of assets capital expenditure is basically for creation of assets so capital receipts normally expected to be used for creation of assets but unfortunately some of the capital receipts are going for the deficit between revenue expenditure and revenue receipts right so this revenue deficit is also significant and important then effective revenue deficit is this is the difference between revenue deficit and grants for creation of capital assets and grants please don't forget whenever grants are given suppose central government when it is giving a grant to state government it is known as revenue expenditure when central government is giving a loan to state government it is capital expenditure loan is capital expenditure grant is revenue expenditure because grant will not be paid back right so here difference between revenue deficit and grants for creation of capital assets is effective revenue deficit and the primary deficit is difference between fiscal deficit and interest payments right having learned this let us look at budget at a glance here i would like to explain you in a nutshell and my main focus in this part is you should have clear idea about revenue expenditure as well as capital expenditure revenue receipts capital receipts through this lecture number 1 you will have clear idea about all these things if you look at budget at a glance total expenditure of central government is 21 and of lakh crores of rupees 21.46 lakh crores is the total expenditure so total receipts are also equal to that total expenditure total receipts are also equal so here total expenditure is 21 and 1/2 lakh crores of rupees total receipts is 21 and 1/2 lakh crores of rupees if you look at the receipts revenue receipts is around 15 lakh crores capital receipts are around 6 lakh crores and here out of the capital receipts this borrowings 5 and 1/2 lakh crores that is fiscal deficit so to understand fiscal deficit if you look at these two things it will be very clear to you total expenditure is 21 and 1/2 lakh crores of rupees total receipts is 21 and 1/2 lakh crores of rupees but there is a catch in the total receipts there are around 5 and 1/2 lakh crores of borrowings right these are known as debt capital receipts you can call fiscal deficit so government is borrowing both the market borrowings as well as other liabilities to the tune of 5 and 1/2 lakh crores of rupees and by adding those borrowings total receipts comes to 21 and 1/2 lakh crores and total expenditure is 21 and 1/2 lakh crores and here fiscal deficit this is 5 lakh 46000 crores or you can say debt capital receipts or you can say government's borrowings 
as well as other liabilities that is 5 and a half lakh crores of rupees which is fiscal deficit and when you compare it with GDP it is 3.2 percent and FRBM Act says it should not exceed 3 percent of GDP but this year it will be 3.2 percent of GDP and the finance minister stated that by 2018-19 it will be brought down to 3 percent of GDP then revenue deficit is 1.9 percent of GDP so revenue receipts is not sufficient for revenue expenditure revenue receipts are not sufficient for revenue expenditure so revenue expenditure is more than revenue receipts so some of the capital receipts which are meant for creation of assets are being used basically for revenue expenditure that is the meaning of revenue deficit effective revenue deficit is some of the grants to state governments grants comes under revenue expenditure some of the grants to state governments will go for creating assets and if you subtract them from revenue deficit you will get effective revenue deficit and it is 0.7 percent of gdp primary deficit is a fiscal deficit minus interest payments and that is 0.1 percent of gdp right so this is budget at a glance and here how rupee comes how rupee comes how rupee goes this i would like to explain for a minute here how rupee comes this is a borrowings and other liabilities 19 paise as i have already told you debt capital receipts or you can say fiscal deficit this is 19 paise so out of 100 paise 19 paise of government revenue is coming from loans and liabilities right then corporation tax corporation tax is 19 paise it is the highest among all the taxes so if you compare other taxes the highest is corporation tax then comes income tax then comes excise duties and please don't forget this corporation tax income tax these two are direct taxes and excise duties service tax customs these three are indirect taxes so direct taxes indirect taxes and at the same time there will be non-tax revenue also there will be non-tax revenue and let me tell you once again corporation tax income tax these two are direct taxes then union excise duties service tax customs these three are indirect taxes so this direct taxes indirect taxes put together direct taxes indirect taxes put together is known as a tax revenue other one is non-tax revenue this tax revenue non-tax revenue put together is revenue receipts right and then capital receipts in capital receipts there are two types one is non-debt capital receipts this three paise is non-debt capital receipts like the selling share of public sector enterprises so non-debt capital receipts are three paise and borrowings and other liabilities is 19 paise these are known as debt capital receipts so capital receipts are two types non-debt capital receipts debt capital receipts so debt capital receipts is nothing but fiscal deficit so i hope you understood this and if you look at how rupee goes the state's share of taxes and duties all of you are familiar with the finance commission recommendations state's share of taxes and duties that will go 24 paise so after that interest payments is 18 paise government is borrowing every year and the accumulation of fiscal deficit is known as public debt on public debt government has to pay interest so interest payments goes 18 paise then remaining things i have given here centrally sponsored schemes 10 paise central sector schemes 11 paise where central government directly executes then subsidies 10 paise then defense 9 paise then other finance commission transfers 
like transfers to local bodies that is 5 paise and other expenditure 13 paise. So, this is all about government's expenditure, right? So, you should have clear idea about capital receipts, capital expenditure, revenue receipts, revenue expenditure. So, these things I would like to explain with three examples. Let us take this house. This house is, let us assume, in Lucknow of Uttar Pradesh and the family is staying in Delhi. The family is staying in Delhi and this house was given on rent. This house was given on rent. So, every month they get income, every month they get rental income that is revenue receipt. Every month rental income is revenue receipt and the family decided to sell this property. The family decided to sell this property and after selling this property, they got rupees 50 lakhs. After selling this property, they got rupees 50 lakhs. That is the capital receipts. So, regular income is revenue receipt and one-time income or you can say by selling some property or by taking some loans, that is capital receipt. When you are taking some loan, that is a debt capital receipt. And when you are getting money by selling some property, that is non-debt capital receipt. So, are you clear? When you are getting regular income, regular rent, that is revenue receipt. And when you are getting money by selling this property, that is capital receipt. Right? Let me tell you with one more example. And you have some land near Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu. And the family is staying in Chennai. And here, every year, the family is getting rupees 50,000 as land lease. Every year, the family is getting rupees 50,000 as land lease. That is revenue receipt and the family decided to sell this land by selling this land family has got rupees 5 lakhs that is capital receipt right are you clear now so now let us look at another example these are various banks and you have taken loan from bank of baroda or state bank of india and when you are taking loan that is a capital receipt when you are taking a loan, that is capital receipt. And after taking loan, you have to pay interest. And the interest payment is revenue expenditure. So, please don't forget, when you are receiving loan, capital receipt. And when central government is giving loans to state governments, that is capital expenditure for central government. When central government is giving grant to state government, that is revenue expenditure for central government. And after giving a loan, let us say, central government has given loan to state governments and state governments are paying interest. That is revenue receipt for central government. So, interest payments are revenue receipts or revenue expenditure. And loan, taking loan is capital receipt. Giving loan is capital expenditure. Purchasing some property by paying some money is capital expenditure. Selling some house and getting money is capital receipt. I hope you are clear about revenue, capital. All the subsidies given by the government, salaries given by the government, interest payments by the government are all revenue expenditure. And if some hospital is constructed, that is capital expenditure. So, this terminology, one should be clear before understanding budget. I hope I made you understand all these things. And let us now start at budget receipts. And in the union budget, receipts. If you understand all these things, then part of economy will be clear to you. I started with the receipts. Receipts are two types. One is the revenue receipts 
other one is capital receipts i am talking about revenue receipts please don't forget receipts of central government are two types revenue receipts capital receipts revenue receipts are two types one is tax revenue other one is non tax revenue this slide talks about tax revenue next slide talks about non tax revenue both put together is revenue receipts let us concentrate on this slide this is tax revenue that is part of revenue receipts so part of revenue receipts is tax revenue tax revenue corporation tax this is highest among all this is highest among all this is income tax corporation tax paid by companies income tax paid by individuals whoever earns so these two put together direct taxes here tax revenue has got two components one is direct taxes other one is indirect taxes out of indirect taxes excise duties is highest excise duties means duty imposed on the manufacturing of goods is excise duty so excise duty is the highest followed by service tax this is imposed on services when you are going to five star hotel some tax is imposed that is service tax customs duty when goods are imported or exported the duties are imposed that is customs duty so these three are indirect taxes and there are some taxes on union territories i am not going into those details so here direct taxes indirect taxes these are two put together direct taxes indirect taxes put together is total taxes total taxes is around 19 lakh crores and please don't forget as per finance commission recommendations as per finance commission recommendations certain taxes are to be shared with the states 32% to 42% finance commission increased the states share of taxes from the shareable taxes and state governments will get this much out of these taxes states will get this much so what is the balance net tax revenue around 12 lakh crores so centers net tax revenue is 12 lakh 27000 crores so centers net tax revenue is 12 lakh 27000 crores so this is a tax revenue we discussed about tax revenue then another component of revenue receipts is non tax revenue non tax revenue so this is second category of revenue receipts here interest receipts suppose central government has given loan to state government of karnataka central government has given loan to state government of karnataka and karnataka government will pay interest regularly every year so that is interest receipt interest receipt is revenue receipts non tax revenue receipt in revenue receipt we have discussed about tax revenue the other component is non tax revenue in non tax revenues this interest payments dividends and profits what is this column dividends and profits is central government invested a lot in public sector enterprises like coal india limited bhgl ntpc they will declare dividend they will declare profits and part of the profit will go to central government part of the dividend will go to central government so that is dividend and profits so this is a major source of non tax revenue for the government so remaining things are other tax revenues like fees so these are all non tax revenues so that is 288000 crores of rupees so tax revenue non tax revenue i have already told you center's share of net tax revenue is 1227000 crores non tax revenue is 288000 crores so total revenue receipts is 1515000 crores so this is total revenue receipts total revenue receipts for central government is around 15 lakh crores so we completed revenue receipts part right look at capital receipts capital receipts are two types i have given both the types here only capital receipts are two types 
one is non debt receipts debt receipts non debt receipts debt receipts non debt receipts one example is this 72500 crores if government is selling 10% stake in bhgl if government is selling 5% stake in ntpc then government will get money by selling property i have already explained you when you are selling a house the income is here capital receipt similarly when the government is selling assets in public sector enterprises that is capital receipt so this 72500 crores is disinvestment selling government's stake in public sector enterprises this is non debt receipt because it is not creating any loan or liabilities but debt receipts debt receipts means government borrows creates liability by borrowing from the market this is 5 lakh 46000 crores this is debt receipt this is fiscal deficit right so here non debt receipts is by selling stake in public sector undertakings and please don't forget we are talking about capital receipts so non debt receipts is basically selling stake in public sector enterprises and debt receipts basically borrowings this is fiscal deficit so total capital receipts include borrowings also and out of total capital receipts major part is borrowings please don't forget so that borrowings and other liabilities is a fiscal deficit and accumulation of fiscal deficit year after year is public debt so friends we deliberated in detail about revenue receipts this is tax revenue next non tax revenue next capital receipts non debt receipts debt receipts put together 6 lakh 30000 crore and come to this slide total receipts of government is total revenue receipts total capital receipts total 21.46 lakh crores of rupees total expenditure is 21.46 lakh crores of rupees and total receipts total expenditure matches but the catch is in the total receipts 5.46 lakh crores of rupees is borrowings and other liabilities which makes it debt receipts which is nothing but fiscal deficit right so this is all about government receipts and i explain you in detail about capital receipts revenue receipts and receipts part we completed and subsequently you have to look at expenditure part i am not taking much time on expenditure part expenditure part regular expenditure regular expenditure or committed expenditure is revenue expenditure salaries of government employees interest payments grants to state governments and similar expenditure is a revenue expenditure subsidies food subsidy fertilizer subsidy petroleum subsidy these are all revenue expenditure and capital expenditure is creation of asset construction of some express way construction of some airport construction of some hospital construction of some school these are all capital expenditure capital expenditure should be increased for the future of the nation as far as possible revenue expenditure must be less and capital expenditure must be increased in due course of time because of the reason capital expenditure creates assets which will be useful for the future generations right so this is about the expenditure as well as the receipts i hope that a newcomer to economy can understand all these things right important figures here in this first part we will deliberate for another 5 minutes and we will wind up we will go to part 2 here important figures in the budget after learning about fiscal deficit expenditure then receipts various types of receipts certain figures please don't forget capital expenditure is around 14% revenue expenditure is 86% capital expenditure should be increased further 
capital expenditure should be increased further so as to create assets. But the biggest problem for country like India is revenue expenditure is increasing, capital expenditure is almost uh, stable you can say. It is not increasing on the expected lines and controlling revenue expenditure is the need of the hour and interest payments. 5,23,000 crores is going away as interest payments. Then pensions, another head is 1,31,000 crores. This is revenue expenditure going away. Pensions, salaries, subsidies, these are all revenue expenditure. You see, food subsidy, this is revenue expenditure. And please don't forget, out of the three subsidies given by the government directly, this is food subsidy is highest among them, followed by fertilizer subsidy, then petroleum subsidy. Defense is around 2,62,000 crores of rupees and there is one more head. If you add it, it comes to 2.74 lakh crores of rupees and this excludes pensions of defense personnel. Then agriculture, rural development, education, health, these allotments I have given here. And here two important points you should not forget. One is revenue expenditure must be controlled. There should be more and more capital expenditure. And out of all the subsidies, food subsidy is the highest. If you look at further allotments, you see Mahatma Gandhi Narega. Mahatma Gandhi Narega is guaranteeing 100 days of uh, work for all adult people of rural India who crossed 18 years of age which was started in 2005 and this year's allotment is 48,000 crores of rupees and this is the highest ever. And Swachh Bharat mission, Swachh Bharat, the government's goal is to make India Swachh Bharat by 2019. And for that, 16,248 crores was allotted. Green Revolution, 13,000 crores. Then Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana. What is the purpose of Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana? The main purpose is to increase irrigation potential, to bring more and more lands under protected irrigation. That is Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana for that 7,000 crores allotment. More than the figure. What I want to convey is, you should understand about for what purpose this scheme is there. Then National Health Mission, 27,000 crores. Sarva Siksha Abhiyan, basically promotion of primary education in the country. That is Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. Pradhan Mantri, Gram Sadak Yojana. What is the purpose of Pradhan Mantri, Gram Sadak Yojana? Pradhan Mantri, Gram Sadak Yojana is basically connecting rural habitations. The goal is all the villages with 500 and above population in plain areas. At the same time, all the habitations of 250 and above in hilly areas, tribal areas, northeast areas. And at the same time, all the habitations of 100 and above population in left-wing extremism affected districts, this was added recently. So, these are to be connected with all weather roads. That is the purpose of Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana and 19,000 crores is allocated. Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, please don't forget housing for all is the goal of the central government and to meet that goal by 2022, in fact, it needs much more allotment and Please don't forget, for Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Rural, the increase in allotment is from rupees 15,000 crore to rupees 23,000 crore. ICDS, Integrated Child Development Services, basically taking care of the needs of the children up to 6 years as well as mothers. So, this is 20,755 crores midday meal scheme. For midday meal scheme, 10,000 crores. And look at some more important aspects. Bharat Net program. What is the purpose of Bharat Net? The purpose of Bharat Net is for providing villages with broadband connectivity. For providing 
villages with the broadband connectivity and the government school is connecting 250000 village panchayats with broadband through this bharat net program and by the end of 2017-18 government's intention is to connect 150000 villages out of total of 250000 villages then mp lads this scheme is basically member of parliament can recommend works up to rupees 5 crores every year this is mp lads or member of parliament local area development scheme so under this scheme member of parliament can suggest every year up to rupees 5 crores to the district collector the works to be undertaken then price stabilization fund this is very important price stabilization fund is basically when the prices are increasing last year it occurred for pulses onions sometimes so when prices are increasing government will intervene to control the prices and for that purpose this price stabilization fund is meant for then mrts and metro projects then crop insurance scheme all of you are familiar with Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana and for that 9,000 crores was kept. And please don't forget, government's intention is to increase the crop area coverage under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana up to 40% in 2017-18, 50% in 2018-19. Then National Mission on Food Processing, 725 crores and interest subsidy for short term credit to farmers, 15,000 crores. government gives interest subvention on crop loans up to rupees 3 lakh per individual farmer so that interest subvention is a bond by the central government so for that purpose 15000 crores is kept aside then deen dayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana deen dayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana is basically for giving electricity to each and every village 24/7 electricity is the primary goal and another important aspect is all the villages and habitations are to be connected by 1st May 2018 and government's program intended for that is deen dayal upadhyay gram jyoti yojana pradhan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana number of all india institute of medical sciences are being established across the country basically to give thrust to tertiary medical care across the country so pradhan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana is meant for establishment of all india institute of medical sciences across the country as well as upgrading the district hospitals to very high standards right so these are important schemes and with this we are concluding part 1 please join for part 2 and part 3 you will learn a lot many things in this budget if you follow these three parts have a nice day thank you